Yeah. I'm good. I don't know. It was uh, this like this is practice five. I think, right? Yeah, five. And, uh, this is kind of the body of what it is that we have to be able to do. So the first one obviously was a one day before spring break, and then we had a three days where you come back and everybody's kind of up off a of break, excited Saturday, go outside, get a really nice day. This is the body of who we're going to be. So this practice is five through nine. To me, will tell us not just myself, but these guys in this locker room, who we really are and who we want to be. And so I think this is a really important time for us. Um, it's not as maybe, you know, hooting and hollering as it is a true, true work day. But these guys got to come out here. We got to we got to work. We got to compete. Um, you know, emotionally, sometimes, like, yeah, you you're, understand it's practice five, six, seven, eight, nine. The emotion might be a little bit different than it is in, in one, two, three, and four. Uh, but the work and the intensity cannot be any different. Actually, it's got to rise. And so I think that's where I'm excited to see who we are and, and let our leaders kind of set the example and lead. And, and sometimes it's coaches got to be able to do that. But I think today was a unique day. And it said that we had to kind of set a tone for what the intensity needs to look like on a Tuesday um, from the start, of, the start of meetings. And, uh, you know, our guys respond well. And, and when the ball goes down, you know, you, you they're going to they're compete, and uh, now we just got to make sure to continue to grow um, in all these opportunities because we're not just taking the 15 practices, we're taking the 34 days, especially these 30 days right here, to uh, build who we want to be. We've seen a lot of JT Seagraves working at the number one. It's just what do you like about him and what he can provide me as an inmate that hasn't had a ton of chances yet? No, he, he's still growing. I mean, he, he's got some opportunities. He's got to take advantage of these opportunities. That's kind of a, the emphasis right now. We've got some guys that are a little bit dinged up and, and don't get to you know, rep as many times. And so some of these younger guys, it's, it's the opportunity that they got to kind of take and run with. And, and if they do, then who knows, right? I mean, they, they, they may not relinquish it. And that's the idea of hunter be hunted, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's if you pull a hamstring, you go down. The reality is if somebody else goes in there, if they, they take it and they run with it, that's a part of the game. And so he's doing a good job. We're going to continue to push him. He's going to have these opportunities. He's just got to continue to take advantage of them, you know, and, and understand and learn the game and play it. Um, not just at the intensity, but the speed at which we need to. What stood out, what stood out about Tyree Walker so far for you? I, there's a lot of things I would say his uh, his humility to start with you know you walk in a new place and I'm not sure you exactly know what to expect you know and and however you've done it in different places and he came in here and I mean, we're, we're competing and, and you know there it's not a live situation yet but I would say you might think out there three-fourths of it is live and there's guys hitting guys down the field there's guys tackling I mean and, and I have yet to once see him complain or whine or throw a ball or just humble enough to say I'm going to show these guys who I want to be and, and, and who I am and uh, so there's a lot of things but to me that on a new guy walking in the door especially at some of those unique positions like that it means a lot. Okay, I think, I think Bryson Green showed you guys on the outside what he could do last year. We've got some other guys opposite CJ, Minnie, Quincy. What do you want to see from whoever emerges from maybe that pool of players well, I think consistency is where it's got to start, right? And I think that if you said anything last year about those guys out there, the I'd say the consistency of understanding you know, what the expectations are. And that, that's not just a, how hard you go, but it's also there's an expectation. Those guys, those quarterbacks and wideouts, got to be on the same page. And so rolling around and trying to figure out where those guys all fit, you know, that, that makes it sometimes difficult. But I think that there's got to be a consistency in everything that you do. I think I'm starting to see that from those guys, a little bit more confidence, you know, not just in what they're doing, but why they're doing it, which allows them to play a little bit faster. And so it's not just catching the football, it's, it's being in the right places, it's having the right timings. Uh, and that's a lot for those guys, but uh, I think this spring, it really kind of started in, in, in bowl practice. The, the consistency, I think, has really started to grow. There's a portal window that opens next week right in the middle. I don't think about talking. Why we, why we push practice to where we are so that we don't have to, hopefully we can look our guys in the eyes and not have to worry about that. You talk about the edge that you want guys playing with. Is Leon Lyra one of the guys that brings that edge and brings kind of that fire you want to see? He has. He has. He's, uh, he's, shown, he's shown some of that. Again, it's going to be this consistency now. Like We talk about don't be occasionally great. Don't be occasionally a tough guy. 
can you consistently be really good? Can you consistently have that toughness day in and day out, whether you, you, know, you get a thigh bruise, you get a little bit dinged? It's a tough sport. It's a tough game. And the only way you're going to get better, the only way we're going to truly create this culture and environment to grow is by having guys be the example of that. He's done a phenomenal job. Another guy like Ty Wee that has been really humble in what he's done, but he's, he's, he's showed us some different things out there and, and his ability not just rush, play the run, but his intensity and, and how he plays the game. I don't know. He's got something in his shoulder, so he'll, he'll be out. Uh, I don't know how long. Um, I don't know exactly what it is, a scapula of some sorts. Uh, it's not a surgery type of thing, but I don't know how much we'll get him back for spring ball. Hopefully we'll get him back later in spring. Maybe not full contact, as you can see. And as you know, Kamoy, it's not natural for him to not be out there and be able to go full live contact. So, um, But it might really be a great advantage to him if and when he comes back. If he's limited, that he has to play without as much contact, which makes him have to play maybe with the mind and under control a bit more, which gives him a chance to be a lot better player. And with Kamoy out, maybe what are you looking for from guys like Warren, Justin Taylor, and some of the guys who are These guys got stats, just kind of what we said. I mean, it, it, JTC guys, these guys, you know, they're going to have those opportunities, aren't always going to be there, you know, and, and some guys you know, leave and say at some point, well, I never just got my chances. Well, you are going to get your chances because things happen in this game. You guys get dinged up. And so when you go in there, you got to be ready for your opportunities. You got to be ready for your chances. You got to be aggressive. You got to be confident. You, I know you got to play the game to, to, to build that, but you got to take that. You know, you got to see these guys that are that are going to go hunt, especially with the opportunities that are in front. After one of the earlier practices, you mentioned about questions about the old line depth. A guy like Joe Huber, how many positions can he conceivably legitimately play for? Which is not a great thing for him because, you know, he, we move him around a bit. But he, he is taking some snaps at center, obviously. And he has started for a whole year at, at tackle. You know, he started for a whole year at guard for us. Um, so, really, he can play pretty much any spot. But you saw us if you watched, we move guys around a little bit more today. Joe Brunner was playing some tackle, too. And so, we're just, just making sure that, uh, you know, we built the depth there because, you know, we lost. Quite a, quite a bit with, with some of those guys that left and transferred and you know, that were really guys that were going to compete to play and to start, and, you know, but also to give you that, uh, you know, a bunch of depth up there to allow you to play a bunch of guys. Um, so we're, we're going to have to continue to build that back. I apologize if you've been asked this before, but how is year two different than you? How is it different right now? Like, well, you should have been at the high school coaches clinic uh, on Friday because I kind of, you know, kind of embraced a little bit of, you know, Reflecting on year one and then you know, aggressively attacking year two. And I think for me, I don't know that it's different. I think there's more clarity in my mind of what it is that we need to do and who we need to be. And so that's a kind of that a little bit more of the intense. It's a little bit more of the shakeup of some of the you know, culture things that we're all about and what we want to do. It's not changing. It's not like saying we're scrapping something that was done here for a lot of years and was really good, but the ability to be able to shake it up and create some more competition, you know, eliminate as much entitlement as we possibly can within our entire program um, to allow these guys in that theory to be hunted, be hunted. And, you know, whether you're a freshman or a senior, if you can compete and you can play, then, then you have your opportunities. Thanks, Loki. This guy that was injured last season, kind of worked on the secondary depth. What's he bring to you being out there and being able to play some multiple positions? <laughs> we had a nice play today, and he has, uh, he has done a really good job. And, and, until this spring, Max had been hurt the entire time I've been here. From the bowl, bowl game the year before, um, I think maybe practiced one time in, in the fall. Um, and, you know, that's some of those things in year one, you, you almost write the guy off. And, and I got to give him a lot of credit. Like he is, uh, you know, he has done a really, really good job. I mean, he has come out, another one of those guys that's an older guy that has been really humbled. You know, he's played, but yet, all of a sudden he walks back in here and he might be, you know, two or three, doesn't know a lot. I mean, like, and, and he has done nothing but this entire spring and, and really the winter, uh, other than work, keep his mouth shut, and now he's out here performing. And he's going to give us a lot of opportunities, a lot of options, I think. Um, 
we're going to continue maybe to move Morales. I think you saw him maybe starting a little bit today, and, and uh, he'll get a lot of those opportunities, and he's doing a really good job. Don't I, I don't know. I, I can't grade. You know, I mean, it, it's really difficult. Um, yeah, it, it's well, it's it's hard. I mean, like the guys are bouncing back and forth. I think it's it's competitive. I think that the consistency is where we're always going to have to continue to grow. You know, the balance between making big plays and not making big mistakes. And that's where I think on Saturday, if I really reflect, we didn't make a lot of big plays, but we also didn't make very many mistakes. And I'm talking about that position. We had no turnovers, really. I mean, I think there was one, one tip ball in the seven on seven. You know, but we got to find that balance between, you know, giving those guys opportunities to be aggressive as well as, as, well as you know, being smart with the game. So I think it's been competitive. I think both those guys at the top, have done a really a good job. These next you know, six or seven practices, we got to kind of turn them loose so we can do a better job at evaluating who we think they are and what it is that they can do for us. Phil mentioned last week turning on the tape from the first two spring practices a year ago and seeing how much further ahead and faster things were. What's your assessment of just how different things are with a group that's been through this? I don't know. I, I have not done that. So some some have said that like, well, do you, do you watch some of the last year's tape? I'm like some things I don't want to watch. And, and not that I, you know, if, if I want to feel a little bit better, maybe I'd pop it on to see, but I'm trying to say, hey, stay in the moment. I think we're in a really a good spot. I think that we've created some competition. We've, we've created some length and some athleticism in some spots where I think can really help us. My objective is to continue to push as hard as I possibly can to all of us um, to increase the intensity and the attention to detail on how we do things. So. At the end of spring, we got a better idea. That, that's what I did feel like after year one. We really had a good idea. I didn't of who we are, who we were, and I thought I did. And then I thought as we performed, I I didn't know who we really were. And so, regardless of what we did last year, this competitive spirit that we're trying to have more and more of, and put some situations. Hopefully, we can all get a better grasp of who we think we really are. So as we go into fall. We can start to formulate a better plan for you know, what we need to do to be successful. You've now had two practices where you've had pants on. What have you kind of taken away from the offensive line? And have you not been here? Well, kind of. Yeah. yeah, well, to tell the offensive lineman that we've only had two practices with that pad. By allowing you to have spiders, I, there's not much, at least the way we go, there's not much of anything different. So I don't know that you could say after two or after, I mean, We've got a good depiction, I think, of where we are. What well, I've said several times is the consistency. So can we come out on practice six and have the similar consistency with the attention to detail, the competitive spirit, and the, you know, the physicality that we need? And then can we do that on practice seven and eight and nine? There's going to be mistakes. There's going to be growth. But ultimately, do you have the competitive spirit? Do you have the intensity? Can you battle and fight through whether you got little bumps and bruises? Because those are all a part of figuring out how mentally tough we are as a whole. So it's uh, about third of the way through spring practices, two freshmen have been through five practices. Just how have you seen them kind of dip, get their toes in the water, if you will? Yeah. Well, the O linemen have not dipped in the water, they've been thrown into the water. And those guys are just, it's, you know, a lot of that baptism by fire. They're in there with the twos and they're, you know, seeing Leon Lowry on the edge, and they're seeing John Pius on the edge, and Daryl P. I mean, they're not guys that are maybe seeing, you know, some of the, the three work. The other guys are growing. I mean, I think that uh, practice five in pads, our second practice in pads, I think that uh, those were the ones where you see those guys all of a sudden start to, the eyes got a little bit bigger. Things became a little bit faster than they were when we were just in spiders and, and, and in the OTAs. So those guys are, I think right now, that, that wall comes a little bit sooner for those young guys. Um, the old linemen in particular don't have the opportunity for that to happen because they're gonna have to go each and every day, which is a great thing. Big Ten is changing drastically. I mean, you guys open the USC. What do you think of the new Big Ten as a group? I mean, it's a challenge. I mean, I, I, I don't know what else you can say about it, right? I mean, whether you have your opinions, whether the, the traditions behind things, and this is, I, I, it is what it is, right? It's it's as competitive as you would ever see. Um, and it's it's a great thing for our game. I think there, there's a lot of things we've got to do to get our game, you know, structured up and, and, and to help us all so that we can, you know, build programs and 
have some consistency like we keep talking about we want our players to have. Um, but nonetheless, what, what we have done is created a, you know, a, a, an environment that is going to be as competitive as it's ever been um, in this league in particular. And, and regardless if you have to go across the country or not, it's just, it makes everybody have to raise their game. And you find out a lot about you as a program and you as, a, as, a, you know, as an athletic department a whole.